Hey Venti viewers, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be going over how to shoot the moon, particularly a lunar eclipse or also known as a blood moon. Let's roll the intro. So today is, what is today's date? March 15th, 2022. We are in Los Angeles tonight. There is a blood moon or a lunar eclipse. Now there is a little bit of cloud coverage here in Los Angeles. So hopefully I am able to pull this off. I mean, I guess if we're watching this video, that means I was successfully pulled it off. So we're gonna break this video up into a couple parts. We're gonna start in the studio. I'm gonna go over the three things that you should bring with you that you should have ready to go for shooting the moon. And then we're going to go over some tips when we're in the field actually shooting the moon. And then we'll come back to the studio and I'll go over the post moon workflow. Tip number one, know where the moon is gonna be. Now I went onto a website called mooncalc.org and I just kind of went on here and roughly put the location of where I was gonna be. I know that downtown Los Angeles is right here, so I'm gonna be up here in the Hollywood Hills. I think that should be a pretty good angle. Again, it's a composite, so I can kind of move the moon around a little bit and do the things that I need to do. But it will tell me when it's gonna hit the horizon. I can see that right now, position of the moon, it's not visible yet because it's only 5.11 and it's not supposed to come out till like eight o'clock tonight. So we have some time, we're planning, we're shooting, should be a good time. Okay, tip number two, location scouting. If you are able to go to the location before this whole process, do it. Los Angeles is notorious for having terrible parking. I went out there this morning, tried to plan it out, see if it's a spot where I can be. And I also opened up an app called Skyview, which I'll show you that right now. I got the moon on my bike. If we follow the trajectory of it, looks like it's gonna be over downtown, which will make a nice, nice photo around 730, 740-ish. And then we'll just keep tracking it all the way up till it's out of its phases. There's a little bit of cloud cover right now, so hopefully all this stuff goes away, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So now that I know exactly where the moon is gonna be lined up, I can visualize it, it's gonna be easy, I planned, feel confident. Okay, tip number three, the gear that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a tripod. So we're shooting the moon, you need it to be still, you don't wanna move the camera around, that's gear number one. The second thing you're gonna need is a really, really long zoom lens. Now I have the Tamron 150 to 500 for the Sony a7 IV, which is what we're going to be shooting on tonight. Uh, this will allow you to zoom in really, really close to the moon, get all the fine details, so that way you can bring them out in post. And the last piece of equipment that I would recommend would be some kind of remote shutter. It's not mandatory, but it does really help. I'm gonna be using an iPad Pro. I will be using Sony Imaging Edge app, which we've done a review for. I'll link to it up here, or up here, or in the description down below. Now, this is going to let us not have to touch the camera at all. We're gonna turn off vibration reduction on the lens. And what it's also gonna do is it's gonna upload two megapixel JPEGs to the iPad so I can potentially review the images and make sure everything is focused and everything looks colored and good to go. Okay, so that takes care of everything here in the studio. Let's hop on the one wheel, get to the location, and we'll start shooting the moon. Uh, this morning I had to bike up this thing. This is so much easier. Look at this hill. Look at this. That's that's a good incline. I just gotta say thank you, One Wheel, for inventing the One Wheel. Okay, just got to our location here. No one else around, which is nice. Right? That's always good. Look at this view. There's downtown right there. That is a nice view. Luckily, everything cleared up. I don't really see any clouds in the sky so this should be a pretty good shoot I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this okay tip number four so now that we have everything set up we can see what this camera is seeing right here on the iPad screen so I can control different settings here and whatnot. Now, tip number four is to make sure that you get your foreground shot. So I think overall this composition is not bad. This is gonna give me a lot of space above downtown to put the moon phases in. Now, the way I like to do my foreground shot is I'm gonna be doing five separate exposures and combining them into one exposure to 
get just a, an HDR, as much detail of the image as I can. I think I'm actually going to shoot with a Tamron 35 to 150 for the foreground shot, and then put the Tamron 150 to 500 on for the moon once it really comes out and I can get that really close shot. Okay, so the moon has just started to come up. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, so tip number five. Now, as the moon is starting to come out, we can see here, oh, look at that airplane right there. I've got some dust on my lens too. I'll have to make sure that I don't have the moon in that little dust spot, so I don't have to edit it later. So as the moon is starting to get into its different phases, I'm gonna do three separate exposures. So that way, in some spots where the moon is a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, we have three separate exposures to make the moon look as good as it possibly can. I think I'm gonna take a picture probably every like two minutes, just so that way I have many, many moon photos to choose from. So that way when we compost these into composite, compost, compost is what you put in the garden. When you composite these images into multiple moons, you have a lot of different options to choose from. And as I mentioned before, I can go and review these images and, and see how they look. Yeah, overall, I think that should be pretty solid. There's a little bit of a haze out here tonight, but the colors in the sky look really nice. But yeah, that's, that's gonna look nice with the airplane right there too. Oh my, this is, this is gonna be a good one. Okay, I just finished taking the last photo. It's 11 o'clock. It's way later than I thought it would be. So I'll see you guys back in the studio tomorrow morning. Okay, so we are back in the studio and the studio stuff is the easier part. The going out and shooting and everything, planning, that's the harder part. So I've been going through all morning, figuring out which photos I wanna pick and everything. And I've narrowed it down to, of course, my foreground photo, which is this photo right here. Now this is a nice, glowy photo of downtown LA. I have edited it already and it's good to go. Now, when I was going through all of my moon photos, there was some photos that I took at three different exposures and some that I took at just regular one shots. As the moon got a lot brighter in the sky and everything else was a lot darker, these were three separate exposures. So I combined all three of these into one photo to give me a very properly exposed photo that looks like this. So that way, that's the great photo of the moon that I'm ready to go and put into Photoshop. So the first thing you need to do is take all of your photos and put them into Lightroom Classic. Now I have 16 photos here. We have our foreground, then we have all of our different moon phases here as well. So I'm gonna select all of these by shift clicking and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna open each individual photo as its own layer in Photoshop. It's gonna take a moment. Okay, so we have our base image here. We can see at the bottom, this is our base image. Now we have all of our moon phases here as well. The problem is with all of these, as you start to make them appear, the entire image appears as well as the, the backdrop in the sky. So what we can do is we can click on the top one, hold down shift, click on the bottom one. We're going to change it from normal to lighten. So now it's gonna do this. It's gonna make all these little weird little moons appear. Now I am a fan of the free transform tool, which is command T. And this is going to let us resize all of them at once. So that way they're all the same exact size. Now, obviously the moon didn't look like that. We need to play around with things a little bit. So I'm gonna turn off all the layers right here. So what I wanna do is find what my first photo is gonna be. It's gonna be this one right here. Now I like have the free transform tool selected, so I'm gonna move it probably right about here. Now there is a little bit of sky from that photo. So we can go over here and we can go to our erase tool, which is right here, and we can just erase that part out. Cool, so now we just have the moon, we're good to go. So now, it is a little bit of work, but now you just go through and do that for every moon photo. So after moving all the moons around and getting everything the way that I want it and adjusting the opacity, we now have our final image that looks something like this. 
Okay, so that concludes our full moon walkthrough from planning the location, shooting, and post-processing as well. Hopefully you guys love this video to the moon and back. If you did, smash that like button. It always helps if you want more Venti Views content, and we will see you in the next video.